this morning's Mass is being offered for the thanksgiving intention of Dolly Esperit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us, uh, as we come together to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us first acknowledge our sins. Lord Jesus, you come as the light of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your presence was, was announced by the angels. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you were born of the Virgin to become one like us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And together now we praise God by saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you are alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and invisible God, who dispersed the darkness of this world by the coming of your light, look, we pray, with serene countenance upon us, that we may acclaim the fitting praise the greatness of the nativity of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of John. My little children, now by this we may be sure that we know God if we obey his commandments. Whoever says, I have come to know God, but does not obey his commandments, is a liar. And in such a person, the truth does not exist. But whoever obeys his word, truly in this person, the love of God has reached perfection. By this we may be sure that we are in him. Whoever says, I, I abide in him, ought to walk just as he walked. Beloved, I am not writing you a new commandment, but an old commandment that you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you have heard. Yet I am writing you a new commandment that is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Whoever says, I am in the light, while hating a brother or sister, is still in the darkness. Whoever loves a brother or sister lives in the light, and in such a person there is no cause for stumbling. But whoever hates another believer is in the darkness, walks in the darkness, and does not know the way to go, because the darkness has brought on blindness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let heaven and earth exult in joy. Let heaven and earth exult in joy. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Let heaven and earth exult in joy. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. Let heaven and earth exult in joy. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. 
Let heaven and earth exult in joy. Alleluia. Alleluia. This is the light of revelation to the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every, new, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a prayer of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus, to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servants in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, this morning in the Gospel, we hear of the account of our Lord's presentation in the temple. And this, of course, brings us, bringing our attention to just what is that temple of God? Right? What is the purpose of this temple in Jerusalem? And of course, on the surface, we can say, well, it's the place to offer prayers and sacrifice to Almighty God. But if you again revisit the Old Testament scriptures, we see that it is where the Jewish people believe that the presence of God resides. Of course, we also know that they, uh, because of this significance, uh, many uh, sacrifices are offered there for the atonement of sins. We hear a little, even a little bit about that today, right? This uh, pair of turtle tubs of two young pigeons that the Holy Family would have offered. And yet, as uh, the letter of the he letters of Hebrews and other uh, epistles would uh, teach us, you know, generations after generations of high priests uh, or temple priests offering up sacrifices for these sin atonements, they didn't amount to much because. It is based ultimately out of human effort, right? that using animal sacrifices, we do our, a, li a little bit, right? a little bit in showing our repentance and our sincere desire to reconcile us with God. But when there is you know, a sin against an infinite love, who is God, the price becomes infinite. And so therefore, no amount of sacrifices would suffice. It's actually quite amazing to think about it, that universally, you know, across the various religions of the world, uh, you think about, you know, uh, pagan religions uh, of the ancient Near East, or even religions in the Far East, or in North America, like, you know, the Mayan and Incan traditions, or uh, Shinto in Japan, 
you know, temple sacrifices was a thing, right? To offer something from creation, something from the work of our hands to Almighty God, and in exchange, ask God for his blessings and for forgiveness. But in spite of that, no human temple can actually do what it claims to, because we cannot capture God. Only God can choose to provide. And this is what we have today. The Lord himself in the little baby Jesus coming into the temple and doing exactly what was supposed to happen in the temple, which is, of course, to bring blessing, to bring about his promise into the world, to once again be the very presence, the divine presence, in our midst. And my friends, I don't think we need to uh, belay the point, but this is what also we experience every time we are here at Mass, this holy exchange. But now we realize that it is no longer our efforts, right? That it is not about how much um, animal sacrifices or things we collect, but rather it is about God himself ultimately coming into our midst. It is an exchange of the most generous proportions. You know, in Mass we offer that bread and wine. We say it's the work of our human hands, but it is, it is in a sense minimal for a reason. To show how little our efforts compare to the great tremendous love of Almighty God. This is why again and again the scriptures remind us that we have an advocate in Jesus Christ. This is the great news, the good news that is announced by the angel, that it is the Lord himself who, want, who desires to be among us. It is the Lord himself who desires to forgive us. It is the Lord himself who desires a new relationship with each of us. So my friends, let us open our hearts again during this, Easter, uh, during this Christmas time to once again experience the joy of Jesus Christ in our hearts to welcome him into our, our very lives so that we too may become temples of the Holy Spirit. The word came into our world as a little child to draw us to the Father. May he be with us during these days of joy to sustain and guide us. And we pray for all those that are without company during the season, and especially finding it difficult during the pandemic. May the Lord ease their loneliness and isolation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are without food and warmth, may they be sustained by the love of concerned fellow Christians. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For ourselves, that we may give glory to God and be instruments of peace to one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the children of the world, for their happiness and well-being, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have gone astray, may their hearts be moved by the mystery of the word made flesh. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord our God, as we celebrate the mystery of the word made flesh, Grant that he may dwell in us and we in him. For you are Lord forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, but a praise the Lord will say, for our good and good of all this holy church. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God in this right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through him the holy exchange that restores our life has shone forth, has shone forth today in splendor. When our frailty is assumed by your word, not only does human mortality receive unending honor, but by this wondrous union, we too are made eternal. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts you have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Lord, we pray upon the oblation of your church. And recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance of your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Bernadette, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, in the of peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, who your servants, Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained through your own. 
Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you and their passing through this life, give kind of to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, the Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, our Lord, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. As the Savior's man, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, gracious to grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Who done in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I invite you now to join in an act of spiritual communion. And together we say, My Jesus, my Jesus, I believe that you are present. I believe that you are present. In the most holy sacrament. In the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment, since I cannot at this moment, receive you sacramentally, receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. Come at least spiritually into my heart. Amen. Through the tender mercy of our God, the dawn of one high will visit us. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by the power of these holy mysteries, 
our life may be constantly sustained through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke you, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the he Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the root of souls. Amen. Thank you for joining us for Mass this morning, and have a good day.